So for our last example for this lesson, we're going to look at data that is paired. So this is dependent data, data that we're looking at a before or after picture that pairs together. So this is a medical researcher claims that a new vaccine will decrease the number of colds in adults. You randomly select 14 adults and record the number of colds each has during a one year period. So the results are shown in this table. So you can see that I only have 14 adults in my survey. So I'm gonna use that table eight for my critical values. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out how many signs I actually have because you can see that my data might not always be exactly 14. So since I want this drug to decrease the number of colds that we have, every time my number gets smaller, I'm gonna give it a positive sign, getting, showing that I'm getting the results that I wanted. So you can see adult one went from three to two, that's gonna give me a positive sign. Then we went from four to one, that's also a positive, positive, Adult four did not change, so that becomes a zero, and adult four really gets thrown out of our data. I'm gonna continue this all the way down, a positive, a positive, a positive, a positive, a neutral, a negative, negative, positive, a neutral, and a positive. Now I'm gonna go ahead and count all of my signs. So I had one, two, three neutrals. So that's gonna drop our sample size from 14, let me count that just to make sure again. One, two, three, 14 down to 11. So that's gonna change my sample size to 11. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine positive signs. And I have two negative signs. So that means when I'm looking at my test statistic, my test statistic is going to be X is equal to two. So that's gonna make this test go quite quickly because I don't have to use that normal distribution table. All right, so for step one in this paired sample test, I'm going to look at whether the colds were decreased or not. So in my null hypothesis, I'm going to say the number of colds will not decrease. And my alternative hypothesis is going to say the new vaccine will decrease the number of colds. So the number of colds will decrease, get smaller. And that is my claim. So this is meaning that my numbers are gonna get smaller. This is going to mean that they're going to be greater than or equal to. At Number two, I have an alpha at 0 0.05. Step three, I'm using a sample size of 11, and I'm going to go to my table eight to find this value. I'm looking at a one tell test at a sample size of 11, so that's going to find that I am going to reject the null hypothesis if the test statistic is less than or equal to two. Now, if you remember, we already found what our test statistic was, so you're gonna see that we're already gonna reject. So we're gonna reject if our test statistic is less than or equal to two. Step five, I've already calculated all of our values. We had three neutrals, we had nine positives, and we had two negatives. So that's going to make our X equal two. That means that we are going to reject our null hypothesis. Therefore, we can say there is enough evidence to support the claim that the new vaccine will decrease the number of colds in adults. Again, because we're rejecting, we have that 5% chance of a type one error.